right, so now we'll do toxicology samples. We'll do urine samples this time around. We did, weren't able to bring blood samples up for this, so, but we'll do some um, introduction of urine samples in here. I'm going to have Chip drive the software because we're going to do this with the Schrader software, the newer software, which I'm not quite as familiar with. We've only just recently gotten it. Um, with the urine samples, we've got just the uh, straight urine that we're going to introduce. So these are some urine samples that we've manufactured. Uh, we've spiked in known drugs into them, so I know what these are, but we would look at these as though they are uh, unknown samples, and then we just have the glass melting point tubes that we'll use to introduce these samples in. So, Chip, why don't you uh, work on changing around the parameters from where we were so okay. we can show changing the parameters back to what we were using. I'm going to turn the uh, dark controller back on again, and what temperature do you want to run the gas heater? Uh, we want to run the gas heater about 300 degrees. Okay, so we'll just set that right here. We're, we're pretty close. We don't have anything magical about the parameters we've been using. It's just what we lit on that has worked fairly okay. well for us. And then we'll go ahead and set the parameters for the... Let's look at mass 100 and higher. Yeah, we'll so we'll set the peaks voltage to 10 times higher than 1,000 there. And let's see, we're in operate mode. We've got detector voltage. And what else do we want to do? Anything else? Uh, uh, four orifice one make voltage. sure 4-Office 1 voltage is at 20. 20. Okay, so that's back to more or less standard conditions. Okay, so now, okay, we so now we'll go ahead and set up a acquisition. Uh, let's just call it urine sample 1. Yeah, uh, so we can call this one 1A. Okay. We'll just give it that name. Uh, normally I'd put some notes in the uh, comments fields, but uh, let's just leave that blank for the moment. And uh, we'll go back and just run uh, acquisition from, let's say, 100 up to 700. Is that okay? That work. Yeah, one second acquisition. And that should do it. So now when okay, the start so button comes up. Let's see. Get rid of those windows from previous stuff. see if I'm any more practiced at sample introduction. <laughs> okay, that's, there we go. Okay, give it a couple of seconds. So, the first thing I'm going to put in is the PEG standard for calibration. Drop that down in. There, there you go. go, perfect. So now we're going to collect all these samples into the same data run. So we've got a PEG standard in there. We'll put a PEG standard on the end. So, glass melting point two, I'm just going to dip it into the sample, so we've got a little urine that hangs on it, and then drop it down into the stream. Okay. Got some peaks there. Run it through again, just so we've got another. Now, oftentimes with the urine samples, a liquid sample like that, it'll wick up the wick up the glass tube as it moves up, so we tend to push the glass tube down in there and try and keep up with that uh, stream as it moves up there. So while it's still running on the same data set, we'll just put the other sample in here. We've tended to run with all of these data in the same data set with peg standards either side of it, so we've got the calibrant in there, and it's uh, just easier for the data management and for the clicking in the mass center software for the data acquisition. you go back to putting the glass tube back into your sample, you want to be careful that you let it cool down because having it in the stream, it will be hot and you can boil your sample. All right. So there's our data acquisition. Okay. That's really all there is for introducing okay. urine into the stream. Stop that. And let's put the dart back on standby. Click the little running man and send him back to the leaning man. Uh, we'll open up the data processing program and open up the data file. Uh, we are here. And start with our default calibration, default parameters. So now with this software, it's handling the calibration in an automated fashion. 
and everything should be calibrated. So which is a done. heck of a lot easier in comparison to what you've seen with the last couple of demonstrations in Mass Center. Okay. And uh, you can see the total line current trace shows where the urine was measured each time. Uh, let's, any one of these, this is the first one? Yes, this is the first Just one. Just average that whole thing. And uh, I'll do a manual background subtraction, but that can be programmed to be automatic. Uh, well, there's certainly something interesting there. Let's save that to a file. So instead of clipboard, let's save it to file. And we'll save that in the same directory as everything else. And let's do the second one here. Does it, does uh, it probably matter? that should work there, yeah. Okay. And we'll save that to a file too. In the same place. Okay. Then we'll go to our search for most program, open up the first file that we saved, which would be this one, I think. So we can look at these as though they Is were. That right? Uh, let's see. Didn't look at it very closely. No, we don't want, oh, wrong, wrong one. We want to pick uh, shredder format. So it'll be that one. There you go. Okay. And let's just uh, look at everything above, what, 5%? You think that's enough? Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll search the drug list and see what it comes up with. Amitriptyline. Amitriptyline, and that's what's in that sample. So okay. we can go at the sample, even though I know what's in there, we can go at it as though this were an unknown. Um, we didn't make these samples up to be uh, realistic. In other words, that the metabolites would be there. We were just after having concentrations of samples there. Um, these particular samples are at 50 micrograms per mil. We wanted to make sure we had something that was going to be able to be seen. Um, it's not really a realistic concentration, but you can see we have a real nice response there at 50 micrograms per mil per amitrip there. While we've got the spectrum up, I'll just point out what else we're seeing in there. Uh, urea is 60, so it shows up as M plus 1 at 61. Uh, in fact, what I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, 114 is something. Oh, that's, that's creatinine, creatinine plus 1. But this is uh, urea dimer, so it's 2 times 60 plus 1. This is creatinine dimer at 227. The uh, 391 is some plasticizer, probably from the uh, melting, point melting point tube point container. Two. Uh, likewise, the same for the 371. That's diactyl adipate. This is diactyl phthalate. So we know pretty much what all these things are. There's some smaller peaks in there, but they're not important. What's interesting is that it found the drug from the drug list within one millimass unit of the uh, expected value, and therefore it labeled it. So take a look okay. at the other spectrum. All right. Uh, it should be this one. Is that right? Uh, no, that the same one? that's the same one. There we go. There we go. That's okay. It. All right. I'll search this one, see what it comes up with. Imipramine. Imipramine. That's uh, what it is. Two millimass units. Yep. And there aren't any other isomers of that in the search list, so we only see one entry. If there were, we'd see multiple entries, and right. we'd have to decide which one it is from some other information. Right, so a sample like that has codeine, hydrocodone in it, that would be more situation. Right, we wouldn't know exactly which one it was, we just right. know that it was one of those. Right. But as far as a toxicology sample, something like that, I'm only going to take that on to a confirmatory test and I would be able to distinguish that on a more traditional confirmatory sure. test, but I know there's an opioid present. Mm -hmm. Which would help you to choose the method that right. you need. Uh, I would, think that's, so that's it? That right. should be it. Okay. Not a whole lot to this one. <laughs>